Welcome back, friends. My name is Dan Vega, and today we are going to be talking about what's new in Spring Security 6. So if you've been living under a rock and haven't heard, Spring Boot 3.0 is now GA. You can head over to start.spring.io, create a new Spring Boot 3 project today, and if you include Spring Security as a dependency, you are getting Spring Security version 6. There is a document for what's new in Spring Security 6. I will leave a link to this in the description below. I would take some time and go through this. There are a lot of breaking changes. Those are things that you'll want to pay attention to. What I'm going to do is pick out three things that I think are important. Obviously, everything's important here, but three that have affected me and some of the tutorials that I've worked on lately, and we'll just talk about those. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to head over to start.spring.io. We're going to create a new Spring Boot 3 project today. We'll include the Spring Security dependency, and we'll go ahead and create a security configuration together and talk about some of these changes. So here we are on start.spring.io. I'm going to go ahead and choose Maven. Uh, the language is Java. The current version is 3.0.0. Again, if you're using anything after this, 3.0.1, 3.1, um, this should kind of apply the same. So we're going to fill out some metadata about this. I'm going to say dev.danvega, and we'll call this security. And you uh, will want to be on Java 17. Again, Spring Boot 3, the baseline for that is Java 17. The baseline for Spring Security 6 is Java 17. So we're going to choose a couple of dependencies here. I'm just going to choose Spring Web. I'm also going to choose Spring Security. That should be enough for us to go through what we need to go through. So with that, what we'll do is we'll generate a new project. This will download a zip. You can open this up in whatever your favorite IDE or text editor is. I'm going to open this up in IntelliJ, and let's get to writing some code. All right, so I have the application opened here in IntelliJ. We're going to go ahead and run this. Uh, because Spring Security is on the class path, we are going to secure everything by default. What this means is that you get a user with the username of user and a password with this randomly generated password. We do this because we don't want you to end up going to production with some password that can be just looked up on Google somewhere, right? So we have this password. So this means that if we go ahead and create some resource in our application, like a risk controller, that it's automatically going to be locked down for us. So let's go ahead and test that theory out. Let's go ahead and create a new controller. We'll create a package called controller. And we'll create a new controller. Let's call this greeting controller. And inside the greetings controller, this is going to be a rest controller. Inside of here, we're going to create a simple git mapping with the slash greet. And inside of here, we will just return a string. Let's call this greet. And we will return hello world. So now, what we want to do is go ahead and restart this application. And I'm going to grab this randomly generated password. And I'm going to head over to the browser. I'm going to attempt to go to slash greet. And we are going to get presented with a login form. Again, everything is kind of secure by default. So if we enter a username and a password, this is going to say bad credentials. If we go ahead and enter user and that randomly generated password, it will allow us to sign in. And now we are seeing that uh, greet endpoint, which returns the string hello world. So, so far, nothing new, right? So that is the default configuration that you get with Spring Security. What I want to do is override that security configuration with my own security. So what I want to do is create a new package here. I'm going to call this config. Inside of here, I'm going to create a new security config class. And this is where our first change comes in. So in the past, what we've done is we've extended, so we've extends web security, web, let's spell that right, web security configure adapter. Now, if you notice that, it's not even coming up as an option. This used to be in the past that you would still be able to use the web security configure adapter, but it was being deprecated. It's now been deprecated and removed in Spring Security 6. So you can no longer use this. If you are upgrading an application from 2.7 or 2.6, um, somewhere around then, up to 3.0, and you're using the Web Security Configure Adapter, that is one change that you'll want to be aware of. 
So what we need to do now is take a more component-based approach to this and create a bean of type security filter chain. So what we're going to do is we are going to enable web security. This is going to be a configuration class, and we are going to create a new bean, and we are going to create a new bean of type security filter chain, and we'll call this security filter chain, which takes in an HTTP security argument. We'll call this HTTP. At the end of the day, you are going to return HTTP.build, which will throw an exception. And that is that. So that is step number one. That is one of the changes that we're going to talk about today. The next change is we need to come in here and configure some things, right? So we want to say that, um, like for instance, the greet method may be allowed by anyone. Anything else you may want to authenticate. So there are some ways to do this, one of which is here in the security configuration. One thing we've done in the past is you can come in here and say authorize, what can I spell today? I can't spell any day, but um, you might have sent authorized requests. You can see that there is a strike through, the, through this one. This is being deprecated. You want to move towards authorized HTTP requests. So once you have that, now we can come in here and say auth, and now this is where we can start to configure things. So one thing I might want to do is I might want to say that any request should be authenticated, right? So any request that comes in, I want you to go ahead and authenticate them. How am I going to authenticate them? I'm going to use a form login, the same as we did in our defaults. One other thing I want to do is allow that slash greet to be hit without being authenticated. So this brings us to change number three. In the past, you could have used things like ant matcher, MVC matcher, or regex matchers. These have all been deprecated in favor of in favor of request matchers or security matchers. So what I'm going to do here is go ahead and say auth.request matchers. Again, this is where you might have used ant matcher, MVC matcher, et cetera. So I'm going to use ant, uh, auth that request matchers. And I'm going to say greet is going to be permitted. So I'm going to permit all to the greet endpoint. So with that in place, now I should be able to go ahead and restart my application. We haven't overridden the default user, so we're still going to get that user with the username of user and this randomly generated password. But now what we should have is we should all be able to hit greet, and then any other endpoint should be authenticated. So I'm going to go ahead and hit greet. And you can see I didn't have to log in for that. Any other, any other endpoint, though, so if we go to foo, we're going to be asked to be logged in. Even though that endpoint doesn't exist, we don't want to tell anyone that it doesn't exist. We want to make sure that they're authenticated for any request, right? All right, so that's really all I wanted to cover. Like I said, I picked three out. We talked about three, but you should go through the release notes. There are a bunch of breaking changes here. Uh, you can just go through each of these and, and kind of see if they apply to you or your application. So there's breaking changes. There's some core changes, uh, giving you some native support if you're using things like pre-authorize and post-authorize. Um, some instrumentation, so Spring Boot 3, one of the big key features was a lot of the changes to observability. So there's instrumentation here in Spring Security 6, uh, some changes to LDAP and changes to web. So go through here. If you have questions about any of the changes, please feel free to reach out. Uh, I hope you found some value in this. If you did, you know what to do. Please give me that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and as always, happy coding, friends. Yeah.